All right, welcome back. So we have introduced the sensitivity and complementary sensitivity functions, which essentially tell us how our closed loop system performs given reference, disturbance, and noise inputs. So in particular, how do we keep epsilon small by designing the sensitivity and complementary sensitivity functions? Uh, we also know that S plus T has to equal one, the identity matrix at every frequency omega. And so that gives us some trade-off where if S is low, then T has to be close to one. If T is low, then S has to be close to one. And there's this crossover point where they start to trade off. Um, so I can't have arbitrarily high bandwidth reference tracking and disturbance rejection and also have you know, arbitrarily low frequency noise rejection. So there's some cutoff where above the bandwidth, I'm trying to attenuate noise. Below that point, I'm trying to have good reference tracking and disturbance rejection. And so the last part of this is thinking about how to relate these to the loop transfer function L, because that's something that has a direct K in it. So this is pretty easy for me to change by changing K. So if I know what I want L to look like, I can design a K to give me a good L, okay? So that's kind of the last piece of this pie here is thinking about if I want my sensitivity function and my complementary sensitivity functions to look like these, then what should my, uh, my loop transfer function look like? Okay, so I'm going to draw that uh, maybe over here, and I'm just going to kind of clone these two plots uh, so I can draw everything on top of each other. Okay, and then this one is like that. And so, if I want S to be really, really small, then the only way I can do that is to make L really, really big, okay? So for low frequencies, what I want is I want my L to be really, really big. I'm gonna erase this. We know that S plus T equals I. So for low frequencies, what I want is L to be really, really big. That will give me, because S is kind of like one over one plus L, okay? And so if L is really big, S will be really small. For high frequencies, I want T to be really, really small. And so at, at um, high frequencies, what I want is L to be really, really small. Okay, so really, really small plus identity is just identity. And identity plus times really, really small is really, really small. So what I want now is for T, for my, for, sorry, for L, my loop transfer function, to be small at high frequencies. And so what you see is that I essentially get this shape where L looks like an integrator, one over S. It just looks like a, an integrator in the frequency domain. Remember, this is my Bode plot as a function of omega. And if L is big at low frequencies, I get good sensitivity. If L is small at high frequencies, I get good complementary sensitivity. So big L at low frequencies means I have good reference tracking and disturbance rejection. Small L at high frequencies means I have good noise attenuation. And so in general, what I want to do is I actually want to cook up a controller K so that this loop transfer function looks like an integrator, one over S, okay? And if I want to move this thing to the right, or to the left, all I have to do is multiply it by something like W bandwidth over S. So if I want a bigger bandwidth, I just multiply this one over S integrator by a big number. So if I multiply this by 10, I can move it to the right and I can get higher frequency reference tracking and disturbance rejection. If I think I have really crummy noisy sensors that have kind of even low frequency components, I can make W be small and I can move this to the left and settle for lower bandwidth performance, okay? So this is kind of what we mean when we say high bandwidth performance is how far to the right or to the left uh, this is. So kind of where does this integrator cross um, the zero dB line, okay? So remember this is all um, in the complex, sorry, th this is the frequency response. So these are log of absolute value of L, log of absolute value S, log of absolute value T. And so these are all approximately equal to one, which is what we want, uh, at zero dB, 
zero decibels, when log is equal to zero. So we sometimes define this crossover frequency or our bandwidth as where this loop transfer function, um, what frequency it is when it hits the zero dB line. Okay, because that's when we have a trade-off between sensitivity and complementary sensitivity taking place. Okay, so this should give us some pretty intuitive gut feel for what we want our controller to do given some plant. We want our system to look like this integrator, this nice clean integrator that has high gain at low frequency and low gain at high frequency because it has good sensitivity and complementary sensitivity properties, which in turn give rise to good reference tracking, disturbance rejection, and noise attenuation. Okay? Um, so some of the next things we're going to do, we're going to figure out, well, what is the highest bandwidth performance I can get? How high can I make S? Um, you know, can I make S really, really big and have really big gain disturbance rejection? And what are the robustness limitations? So what we're going to find is that the function S directly tells me if my closed loop system is going to be robust or fragile. Okay, so properties of this S function in particular, if my sensitivity has kind of a big bumped peak like that, this is bad. And the bigger this peak, the worse the, sens the, worse the sensitivity and the less robust my system is. So what I'm going to try to do is design my controller K to have good loop transfer function properties and also to decrease the bump, the highest peak in my sensitivity function. And there are some beautiful theorems that give you fundamental limits on how low you can make that and how robust you can make your system. So if I have time delays uh, or model uncertainty, I can get into, I can tell you kind of fundamental limitations on how robust I can be and at a given at what bandwidth. Okay, and this is getting towards that idea that LQG regulators never have guaranteed uh, stability margins, or at least you can always build one that's arbitrarily non-robust. We're going to look at that in terms of the sensitivity function. Okay, so that's coming up. Thank you.